people you can really show your love and support by hitting that like button subscribe button and of course if you want me to support really really more you can visit learncodeonline.in so let's get started and move forward in our javascript series and in the previous video we talked about what is document object model i showed you some of the reference for the api that you can use for document object model and we learned that how we can access a few elements not much just a few of them now the big questions are still in front of us which is first and foremost is where should i include my javascript in my html document this is a big question and some people say that hey always keep that in the end of the body because page loads a little bit faster yes i have seen those arguments and some says hey load that in the head because it should be the first thing that should load up uh yes and technically both of them are correct but both of them are wrong as well so in this video we're going to answer this question that where we should keep our javascript in our html and that's going to come up automatically through this video and the big questions are how we can access more elements in this document object model how we can manipulate them so this is the one we will not be learning yet how we can create those elements which we will be doing later on right now we don't want to do that surely it will come but right now the goal is how we can manipulate them how we can select them and where should i keep my javascript file so as of now i have kept my javascript file at the bottom you can see that here pretty big okay so the goal number one that we are having is I want to select this title tag and I want to change this from lco dash learn code online dot uh, this learn code online to simply I have changed. Uh, that's not very elaborative, but that's what I really want to do. Okay, so my JavaScript file is already attached. Now, how you can manipulate this is totally dependent on what you are getting back when you are calling anything like uh, when you call your title tag, you directly get your title tag. But this is not the case when you select things uh, with paragraph tag or h1 tag or maybe something more. So let me just get you through that. So first and foremost, what I would like to have is I would like to just log what eh, what happens when I say document dot title. What is the thing that I'm getting back from it? Once I understand what is what is the thing that I'm getting back, then only I can move forward. So let's just save that, go back here, and notice when I select document.title, it automatically gives me the text which is written inside the title tag. This can be different case with our other selective methods, okay? So since I'm getting directly this method, I can use my JavaScript directly here. So what I can say is something like this. I can simply say, uh, document dot title and that is gonna be I got changed there we go as simple as it could be okay now as soon as my JavaScript file is gonna be loaded it's gonna get changed so I have saved it and there we go notice it says I got changed when I hit reload it's gonna automatically change because everything is loading so fast on that okay that is good so now the first problem is being solved. Now let's create the second problem and we are going to solve that. So instead of this h1 tag, I'm going to change that to simply paragraph tag. Okay. Now this is my first paragraph tag, a really blank tag. And I'm going to have one more paragraph tag. And this is going to have an ID this time. And this is going to be ID of uh, ID one, probably like that. And I'm going to say this this is p with id so that we can actually figure it out that this is and we're gonna say uh this is regular p tag okay so that we can actually identify which one we are looking up for and we're gonna have a duplicate of this and instead of this class we are gonna say the instead of the id we're gonna say class and we are gonna say uh class one just like that and this P is with class. Okay, there we go. And also let's have a couple of paragraph and we are gonna say this is lower paragraph. Okay, we have one more, just for fun stuff, let's just have one more and we're gonna say uh, this is uh, another lower paragraph. Okay, so now we have pretty much almost all type of tags that we usually face. They are being divided using IDs or without IDs or classes or just like that. So now we are going to learn how we can select them. And there are various ways. I'm going to show you what I use uh, most often and most of the developers use, but there are other options as well. So let's just go on to here. Now let's just see how we can select them. So first of all, we're going to log that because it's much more easier. Now the first thing that you'll be seeing quite a lot is uh, document dot 
get element. Now notice here there are a lot of things here. Get element by ID, get element by class name, get element by name, and of course tag name. These are the most famous ones which are being used. Still, I don't use any of them much often because we have better options. So just to prove my point, if you want to select any element by ID, uh, if there are multiple ones, it's going to get select them. So what you can do is you can just pass on the ID. So in this case, the ID is, let me just show you that. And of course, notice the element ID needs to be passed on in a string format. That means whatever the ID is, you need to pass on in the codes. So my ID that I'm looking for is ID one. So I'm going to copy that, go up here and paste that. Okay. Now let's go back here and clean the stuff and we're going to hit a reload. And notice now it's returning me that exact paragraph tag with the, the ID as ID one. And of course, notice very good difference here. When I was selecting the title, it gave me the inner text of this title, not the title tags exactly, but this guy is returning me the paragraph tag. So in case you are wondering that I can just say something like this, uh, copy that and I can say something like this is going to be equal to uh, something, oops, something different. This is not at all possible and I can save that and can show you that hey, this is not because previously we were getting exact same thing or text which we wanted to change but now that's not possible. This is not what we and I'll show you how we can do that. So similarly, we have learned uh, that this is up here. Similarly, we have get element by ID. I'm going to just duplicate that. Uh, we have other options as well, which is we have seen get element by ID. We have dot get element, come on, get element by class name as well. So similarly, just you have used ID, you can use the class name as well. And notice still you have to pass on in the string and that's it. So we have all these stuffs that we have and we can use them that is get element by ID, get element by class name. But still I mentioned the point that I don't use any of them because we do have better options. And once we understand that particular option, we're going to learn how we can manipulate these things. So uh, let me get rid of that and let me show you a better way of selecting any particular element here. So uh, what is this way of selecting the things? So what I can do is I can create a simple constant and I'm going to say my element and the way I like to select the things is something using this. I'm going to say document dot and my favorite thing is query selector. And you can see there is query selector and query selector all. This is the one that I use a lot. So let's say, first of all, I want to select query. Now in this query selector, you can see that we can just directly put any tag that we want. We can also put directly the classes and IDs if we wish to. So for example, let's just say I'm interested in selecting the paragraph tag. I can just simply say P and that's it. It's going to select the paragraph tag. The only thing that you need to worry about this query selector is, let me show you that. It's actually much more easier. So we're going to clean that up, hit a reload and come on. Okay, we are not getting anything. Hit a reload and there we go. Okay, why it is not selecting anything? Looks like I made a mistake. I forgot to console log that. Okay, so we're going to log that and I'm going to say my element. Save that and let's just go back, hit a reload and there we go. Now notice it just selected this is regular p tag. So what we are seeing here is there are many paragraph tags, but still we are getting one. So they are very eager to select whatever they are going to select the first thing, it's going to just do that. But if you use something different, uh, which is query selector all, and you say, I want to select all the paragraph tag, then notice it gives you an array. Uh, let me just hit a reload to show you that. Notice it gives you an, an entire array in which the first element is having a paragraph. And we can see that we have got second is paragraph ID done. The second one is class one, then paragraph and paragraph. So what you can do, let's just say you are interested in only the first one. Just we have the knowledge of array. I can just say zero. That is the first element I'm interested in. And I can go back and clean that, hit a reload. And notice this time I have got this paragraph tag. So this is the one thing that you have to keep in mind. Query selectors are amazing. So what you can do, let's just say you are interested in this ID, which is ID one, okay? What you can do in this case, if you're interested in ID, 
just like you select the IDs and classes in your CSS file, you can use exact same knowledge. For example, for the IDs, we use pound sign, hash sign, whatever you call that. We can just go ahead and do that. And if I hit uh, simply a reload there, uh, there we go. We are we don't actually need to say uh, this zero in here because it's gonna just get the one element. So save that, go back and clean that, hit a reload. And there we go. Of course, we have got entire list of it. And the first object is usually the one that we are looking up for. So we are gonna say get element by ID. I want to see the first element of it. Go back again and hit a reload. I know there are a lot of things that I'm doing, hitting reload and stuff. But where you can also shift the time to be a little bit slower. Okay, so the thing is done that we are now able to select. In case you are wondering how to select classes, uh, that is also pretty easy. You can just select any class, just like you select the classes in CSS, exactly same. Yes, so that is the reason why I love this particular thing. And of course, you can go back and clean that, hit a reload, and you will notice that now we have got a class. Okay. So the problem is solved that we are able to get that. But, oops, I bumped the mic. <laughs> okay, now let me give you the answer of the question that where you should keep your JavaScript file. That's an interesting question. In the next video, we're gonna learn how we can manipulate that. So, so far we have seen that I'm keeping my JavaScript file at the bottom and if I run this, clean that and run that, my file is working, I'm able to select that particular element using tag name, class name, or ID. Notice what happens when I cut this out and I moved it into head tag, paste that, save that, and I go back here, clean the stuff and hit a reload. I'm not getting any answer, I'm getting an undefined. Can you give me the reason why is that happening? Uh, I know many of you can, but let me explain that. Now. I told you about document object model. Now your document is being laid out exactly in the format how you're writing your code from top to bottom. Now you said that first I want to lay down my head element and inside that use my JavaScript file and just use it. And then we are laying out our body. This happens insanely fast that your JavaScript actually runs that and before even your body tag is actually able to fetch that on the web page, your script is already done, that's it. So that is why you are getting undefined. So the answer to your question where you should keep your JavaScript file is totally dependent on how you want to use it. Now in case you want to select anything, perform any kind of such stuff, then obviously it makes sense for me that uh, I should load it at the bottom. But in case your web page is dependent that there are some script that needs to be load first and based on that loading how your web page should be structured, then obviously it makes sense to load it before the page loads, that is in your head tag. So there is no definite answer here that where you should keep your file at the head or at the bottom, it's totally dependent how you want to perform. Again, I repeat that, if you want that your web page requires some of the structure, maybe jQuery or some kind of stuff, then it makes sense to implement them in the head tag. But if you're writing some custom code that will be dependent on what is existing on the web page, then you should use that at the bottom. Okay, so I know video is getting a little bit longer. In the next video, we're gonna learn how we can select the elements and can edit them. So let's keep the video short. And in the next video, we're gonna do that. So show some love by hitting that subscribe and the like button. And of course, it would be really amazing if you can share these videos. That's it, and I'm gonna catch you up in the next one.